Sierra Sierra Leone is a small but naturally beautiful developing West African country that is facing a major healthcare crisis that many argue is one of the most pressing issues facing this relatively young nation. The maternity mortality rate in Sierra Leone is at an alarming rate. One of every 21 women is at the risk of death during childbirth. In a country of close to 6 million people, there are only three obstetricians in the entire country. A child born and living in Sierra Leone has a more than 25% chance of not living to the age of five. It is quite alarming to note that Sierra Leone ranks number one for mortality of those younger than age five. The primary causes of death are malaria, diarrhea, and pneumonia. Because of such high mortality rates in Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone only has a life expectancy of 45.3 years. The mothers are also at a great risk of death. Approximately one in every eight women die during pregnancy or childbirth. Death, 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 death. I'd be completely devastated. Like anyone who knows me knows that like, yeah, I might be studying engineering, I might be young, I might be all of this, but my like my complete goal in life is to be a mom. I would be really sad. Like it's kind of depressing because I really want to be a mom. So I wouldn't, I don't know, I don't even, that's not even something I would want to think about at all. I would definitely be scared um, and I would definitely be hesitant about actually bringing a child into a world just because of the conditions and the reasons why there's one in the eight chance of dying during childbirth, I don't know that I would actually bring a child into the world. I would be really distraught, and at the same time, I just like probably wouldn't want to have kids overall because it's like, what's the point? My sister was one in eight, Florence Japo Yai Sawane. She was taken to the hospital during her pregnancy, she complained of having contractions and the husband drove her to a private hospital. Nobody would want to take their relatives to a government hospital thinking that they don't have all the um, equipment and lack of doctors. So she was admitted for the evening and before the morning, she was supposed to be having a cesarean session which didn't work out. Um, I'm assuming the doctor, there was one doctor, which I don't think it was appropriate for one doctor to do that surgery on a patient. And so during that pregnant, I mean, during that surgery, she, I mean, he may have, which I, I, I get to understand later that they may have cut off her spleen, which made her bleed to death. And, um, they did call for blood several times, as stated by the husband. She went, I mean, the husband then went to the military blood bank to buy blood. I think it's a, a lack of everything, lack of facility, good facility, lack of medical equipment and funding, funding to fund the hospitals. Nurses not being paid, every doctor not being paid as the, you know, you go to school, you're expected to work and work and get paid. One doctor probably to 50 patients in one day. How can one person be taking care of all this one patient when you're just one doctor in one place? So poverty and greed, I would say, is the cause of all that. Because if you have doctors who study, or who studied with a government scholarship, I'm assuming when you go back to the country, you help your country. But if you
My name is Muna Sise. I'm a 22-year-old woman living in the Kono District in Sierra Leone. I'm nine months pregnant with my first child, and I have to walk five miles to the closest hospital. The dimly lit and small, isolated hospital seems to be very promising after my long walk. Shortly after getting to the hospital, my water breaks. There are already three women who have similar conditions to my own, waiting to be helped. The hospital has only one doctor on staff and four midwives. After surviving several minutes of excruciating pain, I'm finally taken to a room with a rusty metal cot with a small cotton blanket and very few adequate medical supplies. I soon began going into labor. A midwife comes into the room to help guide me through the labor process. At this point, the pain is like none other and my screams become strong enough to make blood curdle. As I begin to push the baby from my womb, I begin to feel like a burden is being lifted. My child is born, but the pain does not subside. I begin to bleed profusely, and the doctors could not seem to stop it. My heart is beating rapidly, like never before. I hope I don't become the one in.